Hey guys, how you going? My name is Dom and in this video I would like to take you guys through um, how to create this show hide password toggle button using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. So right here we have the final result and we have this um, eye icon next to the input field, um, sorry, next to the password field. And if I was to type in my password here, such as decode DOM, it's obviously hidden, right? But if I was to press this eye icon, the button gets revealed. And that's actually being held down. If I was to let go of the button, um, the password once again gets hidden. So you may have seen this on touchscreen devices or touchscreen apps. So um, let's create this right now. So inside the plain HTML document right here, um, we're going to begin with an input field and then build on top of that. All right, so we have this password field. Um, inside the HTML, we have um, this right here. So we have the input field down here um, with a type of password and an ID of INP-password. All right, we've also got um, a few styling for the input field, just some colors and fonts. This is not going to affect the functionality of the show hide password button. So this, all this stuff right here is optional. Um, we've also got a focus um, pseudo class that changes the border color. All right, so um, back inside the web browser, we're gonna start by actually putting the button next to the input field. So um, the actual icon comes from um, the font awesome library. So I'm um, going to fontawesome.com. Um, it's a collection of icons for your web pages. So it's all free. Um, there is a pro version, um, but the free version comes with a lot of icons. So um, to actually install or include the library to the HTML page, um, go to the how to use section, um, then just scroll down and you want to copy this link tag. All right, so I'm just going to copy this just like that. I'm going to paste this into the HTML inside the head section, if you have one. All right, so I'm going to save that. Um, the Font Awesome library is now included inside the web page. Simple as that. Okay. So we have this included now. Um, the actual icon to use will be the eye icon. So um, you can do a search inside the icons here for the eye icon, and you will find um, this right here. So. Um, to actually include this icon on your page, once again, it's quite easy. Um, you can just scroll down and copy the HTML once again. So I'll copy this just like that and then paste that inside the HTML document next to the input field. All right, so um, it's an I tag with a class or um, two classes, FAS and FA-I. So um, if I was to save this and refresh the browser, we have um, this right here. So let's just add some basic CSS to this button to make it look a bit nicer. All right, so back inside the HTML, let's go inside the style tag and just target a class. Let's first add that class to the I tag. So let's add a third class and call this class btn show hide pwd so button show hide password all right so we have this third class attached to the i icon um so the i tag so back inside the css so let's just target um that new class so a class of btn uh, show hide pwd all right gonna add a color of dark blue so triple two and then c6a we can make the cursor of a pointer, um, a margin left of 20px, and an opacity of 0.5. We can also add some pseudo classes. So we can say, for example, btn show hide password. Um, on hover, we're going to make the opacity as being 1. All right, and also, um, when it's active, so when it's being pressed on, we're going to um, scale it down. So we're going to say transform and then scale to 90%. So scale of 0.9. Right, so we have all these three styles um, right there. If I was to save this and refresh the browser, we now have this right here. So we have um, the button working with the, um, the press down effect. Right, so 
looking good so far. Um, now we can actually begin on the JavaScript. I might just reduce the margin left to um, 10 px. Okay, I can save this and refresh. All right, so looking quite nice. Um, so for the JavaScript, um, the way it's going to work is we're going to basically um, say that for this i tag, we're going to specify an ID inside here, um, which is the target input element. Okay, so basically going to say we're going to say for this icon or for this button, we're going to say make this input field um, show or you know show or hide. Okay, so back inside here, let's add an HTML5 data attribute to this i tag. So we're going to say data dash four is equal to imp dash password. Right, so now we have this um, this four piece of data on this i tag, which says this i tag this button is for the imp password input field, and that's got to match that ID inside here. Right, so that's your link between these two elements. So now inside the JavaScript, we're going to actually um, make all this stuff work. So first, let's just get a list of all the BTN show hide passwords. So all of these guys inside the HTML document. So let's make a new constant down here and call this one all BTN SHP. That stands for all button show hide password equal to document dot query selector all. Right, we're going to pass in dot btn show hide pwd inside here. This is a list of all of these inside the document. So we have only one right now. All right, just keep that in mind. Okay, so for each one of these buttons, we're going to add the functionality. So we're going to say all btn shp. We're going to use the for each method. So um, dot for each. So for each button, um, we're going to fire off a function. All right. This will take a single argument, that being um, the actual button. So we have the actual button by itself as um, the button variable or um, parameter. All right. We got the button, which is basically this right here. We're going to get the actual input field based on the value inside the data for attributes. So inside here, let's make a new constant and call this one for elements. Okay, equal to document dot get element by ID. We're going to pass in here button dot data set dot for. So here we have for element is equal to this right here. Button dot data set dot for is referencing that for right there. So get that element by ID that right there, which is him right there. All right, so um, that's your link between those two elements. So now we're just going to make sure that we actually found the element. Okay, so we're going to say if for element, that means if we found the for element, so um, we can now check if the element is actually an input field. So we're going to say and for element dot instance of HTML input element. Okay, so we have um, if it's been found and if it's actually an input field. All right, then we're going to do all this stuff inside here. So this is actually um, the juice of the um, functionality. All right, so. We're going to add two um, event listeners to um, uh, this this button. Actually, we're going to add about six, but the first two is going to be when the user actually presses down on the um, on the button. So we're going to declare a new array here with two elements, that being uh, mouse down, the so two strings, mouse down and um, touch start. So these are our two elements, or oh, sorry, our two events to actually look out for um, to reveal the password. All right, we're going to say dot for each, and then we're going to pass in the event name um, parameter. So for each event, we're going to add an event listener to the button. 
So we'll say button dot add event listener. Um, the event name listener. So one of these. All right. So event name, and then we're going to run this function when the button gets pressed down. All right. We're going to say for element. So our input field. Okay. Um, dot set attribute. We're going to change the type of the input field to a text field. So we'll say type and then text. So now I can save this and then refresh the browser and type in something like um, a decode and then hold down the button and it gets revealed. If I was to let go, it stays there. Let's actually implement the functionality for letting go of the button. All right, so back inside the HTML, we're going to add six events down here um, for letting go. We're going to say when the mouse goes up off the button, when it leaves the button, okay, um, when the touch end event is fired, so on, um, on touch screen devices when um, the touch goes away, and then we're going to say um, also touch cancel. When the touch gets cancelled, we're going to um, once again show the password. We're going to say dot for each. Once again, using the event name parameter, we're going to now um, we're going to say button dot add event listener. And um, once again, using the event name um, uh, parameter there. This time, we're going to accept the event object inside the function. Okay. We're going to say e dot prevent default. So on touch devices, if you hold down your um, your finger for long enough and then let go, um, the context menu appears. So to actually prevent that from happening, we're going to use the prevent default um, uh, method right there. All right. We're also going to say uh, for element dot set attribute. We're going to set the type once again to the password. Okay, so we're going to inside here. Um, we're disabling the um, the context menu when you hold down your mouse for long enough or your or your finger for long enough. We're going to set the password um, field. Uh, sorry, set the input field once again to a type of password. So that that will hide the actual um, text. So I can save this and then refresh the browser and type in something like decode once again. Hold this down. And it gets revealed. If I was to let go, it hides. Um, once again, if I was now just um, uh, actually move the mouse away, so like that, it also um, gets hidden. And it works on iPad or any touch device as well. So um, we can just test this real quick. So we have once again on on, on the actual iPad here. We're going to say um, decode, and then use the touch start event, um, and then a touch cancel event, and that happens right there. So it all works um, nice and well. And that is how you can make your own show hide toggle um, button using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.